Munchkin. Um, so for my MA in creative writing, I wrote a collection called The Sparrow in the Mead Hall, which plays around with the parable told by the Venerable Mead, writing in 731 AD, about human life being like the swift flight of a sparrow through Mead Hall, where you sit at supper in winter. The sparrow flying in at one door and immediately out at another, whilst he is within, is safe from the wintry tempest. But after a short space of fair weather, he immediately vanishes out of your sight, passing from winter to winter again. This particular poem was also inspired by a photograph by Issa Leshko, and I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly, of an old horse whose painful eyes have been surgically removed. She has a whole collection of photographs of farm animals who have been allowed to grow old, and I'd really recommend looking them up. So, thank you so much to Kim Moore again, and to poets and players. The Wings of Sparrows The will to live is made of sparrows. There was a 28-year-old horse. Its painful eyes were removed as a kindness. At this loss, a confusion of sparrows poured out of the horse's empty sockets and smashed into the stable walls. Soon, its body was a hollow cast of a horse. Its off-white coat was cratered. The people dragged the horse to water, but the horse was an angry moon and the gravity of its despair pushed the water away. A woman came to photograph the horse. She was interested in animals growing old. The eight ounces of her adult female heart were accounted for by roughly ten sparrows, and when she saw the cavernous horse scooped out like an unlit pumpkin, one sparrow quit her chest. The bird crossed the yard and flew into the horse's vacant eye. In the image she gave us, her light is gracing the shadow, and the horse has turned its face as if to listen to the singing of the wolves. Sweat and tears. It's called The Romance Languages. My mother 
is learning French in stumbling little phrases. Bonjour, Julien. Bonsoir. Who is Julien? Merci, Julien. Salut, Julien. Bon oui. I imagine a man dressed all in blue, drinking a glass of badwa. Bonjour, Julien, she says. My father, in the living room, watches World War II films in the darkness, oblivious to Julien, the Frenchman, watching his wife over the rim of high-end sparkling water. Au revoir, Julien, says my mother. Les femmes sont toutes les mêmes, cries Julien, and melts into his glass, where the bubbles pop and bump against each other, trying to express everything they feel, like germs of life connecting and expanding. My mother goes and makes two cups of tea, carries them to my father in the lounge, and switches on the lamp. They sit together, not speaking, fluent in each other's thoughts. And this poem is called Distance. Because we live on different continents, sometimes the connection is interrupted when we speak. Yet, at those times, I merely hear the undulation of your tone slowed down, the cadence of you elongated, an extended sweetness. And because I know you, I piece you together across the broken distance. Even when we're not speaking at all, when I cannot see the grains of your skin pixelated, so the hues of you, the various pores of you, make cameos in the stop motion video. Even then, we're not apart. I feel you moving through your day and count down five hours each afternoon to picture you waking, your voice has gone soft with sleep in the curve of your throat. Distance sounds like a divergence of stances, so I cannot feel distant from you. Not when I sense my body shift in sympathy with yours and unseen nor when I sleep with the thought of you at my back and open my eyes to your image again, 3,000 miles away, the closest source of light. I thought I'd end on another sparrow poem, so this poem is called Listen to the Sparrow. Listen. If this is it, just the flight of the sparrow through a neat hall. If life is a dapple in a void, then I do not want to be the sparrow anymore. Listen, I have tried to be the sparrow. Light, not of this life. Hollow bones, quivering and uncatchable, making straight flights across the room. But listen, I want to be the woman sat at the long table with candlelight in her hair, who feels the animal warmth of bodies inside her and believes that outside the hall there are glades and meadows, and God, I want to want to lie somewhere in sunlight and feel the glow weep its honey into my bones until all of me is a calm pool, star crease, and glad at the sound of sparrow song. Thank you very much.
Um, please welcome Isabel Thompson.